for investments. We're just a touch away. Monday to Friday at 12.30 p.m. Only on Bloomberg Quint. Good morning, you're watching Daybreak on Bloomberg Quint Live and I'm Alex Matthew. First, let's look at the headlines this morning. Asian stocks start on a positive note despite lingering trade concerns. China threatens to put all trade talks on hold with the US if it goes ahead and imposes sanctions on Chinese imports as Donald Trump had threatened last week. Fuel retailers in India cut petrol and diesel prices for uh, another day. The reduction is by around 15 paise per litre in Mumbai. Diesel prices have been cut by the similar amount. Boeing is said to have beaten Airbus to bag new orders from Vistara. That's a Bloomberg exclusive. Let's turn to the international markets now and Wall Street stocks rallied on Friday after US jobs growth topped expectations, shifting attention from global trade war worries. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose more than 200 points to recoup most of its losses for the week. Bloomberg's Abigail Doolittle wraps up Friday's market action in this report. Stocks rallied in Friday's Wall Street session on strong economic data, plus there was some relief over abating political uncertainties in Europe relative to the major averages. The Dow climbed by about eight-tenths of one percent. The S&P 500 rose by one percent, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq outperformed up 1.4 percent. Now, relative to that economic data, the jobless report for the month of May was stronger than expected, with 223,000 jobs having been added, well above the survey, and that did bring the jobless rate down to 3.8 percent, its lowest level since 2000. There was also manufacturing data for the month of May, and it came in stronger than the survey as well. So giving investors another thing, another piece of economic data to cheer about. Now, relative to sector composition, nine of the 11 S&P 500 sectors were higher, and five of those sectors climbed by 1 percent or more. Among those sectors, healthcare, the financials, industrials, materials, and technology. As for some outsized movers on the day, Lululemon, the yoga wear maker, up more than 16 percent, its best day since 2008, hitting a new record high, this on a blowout fiscal first quarter, plus strong guidance. We also had the shares of uh, Michael Kors and AMD climbing by more than 5 percent, excuse me, 4 percent, while TripAdvisor's climbed by 5.9 percent. On the week, interestingly, there was a little bit of a split, though, because the Nasdaq climbed higher by about 1.5 percent, while the S&P 500 was up far less, up half a percent. The Dow actually fell down about half a percent. But in Friday's Wall Street session, with stocks rallying and haven bonds trading lower, it capped a roller coaster week in a risk-off tone. From New York, Abigail Doolittle, Bloomberg News. Now, Bill Gross, who is fund manager at Janice Henderson, discusses the May U.S. jobs report and how it may impact Federal Reserve policy. Listen in. Well, I think it solidifies uh, certainly June, Tom, and that's not saying much because that was 95% uh, percent, uh, going in. But, you know, uh, perhaps another one, if these types of numbers continue, I, th I think the most important number to me was the average hourly earnings at 0.3 and now annualized at 2.7%. Uh, and so, you know, are we uh, making America great again? Um, I guess from the standpoint of jobs and GDP, um, inflation moving higher in terms of wages. And so, um, you know, it, it's pretty much of a scenario where the Fed, uh, the Fed hawks, basically think that they can move forward once, twice, some say three times. I say uh, June is the last. Now, the latest round of trade talks between the U.S. and China ended on Sunday with China warning that all progress between the two economic superpowers could be lost if the U.S. pushes ahead with trade sanctions. Tom McKenzie of Bloomberg News brings us all the details in this report. I think what you saw over the weekend is bubbling to the surface, these deep-seated frustrations now amongst Chinese policymakers when it comes to the switchbacks that they're seeing from the Trump administration and the lack of clarity around these trade discussions. And don't forget, Commerce Secretary Ross came here for two days of talks, as you said, with Vice Premier Liu He. Following this agreement that was signed up to by both sides, the U.S. and China, May the 19th, both sides touted this agreement at least for 24 hours, 48 hours, and then 
then, of course, you had Trump coming out saying, well, we don't even know if this agreement is going to stand. And then, of course, last week, he re revisited the idea of imposing these tariffs on Chinese imports. So initially, this weekend had been about fleshing out that agreement. But really, following those comments from Trump, it was a bit of a fool's errand. So we weren't expecting much in terms of details. Both sides said that it was pretty cordial, it was friendly, and it was productive. But we didn't get a joint statement, and we didn't get any further movement, it seems, at least not publicly, uh, on this decision or this agreement by China to increase its imports of agricultural uh, and energy products. And what we did have, as you pointed to, over the weekend was what state media have said is a red line now for China's policymakers, which is we will not implement these deals or these agreements until the threat of tariffs is taken off the table. All right, Tom, if we push that just a little bit more forward, how else might China respond then? Well, interestingly, as we've had increased kind of murkiness around the Trump administration's strategy on this, we've had a bit more clarity on where China was hoping to lead things in terms of these talks. So yeah. what we've had are moves, of course, to open up sectors, whether it's the auto sector or the financial sector, moves to reduce tariffs on products. And we had expected and we'd heard that officials were drawing up new lists of products ranging from agricultural products, food products, cosmetics, health care, that they were going to reduce taxes on. Now, these, those may still come into into force, but it may be down to uh, how the Trump administration uh, responds from here. What we hadn't seen was China making any serious moves around changing its industrial policy and the Made in China 2025 policy. That seems to be something they haven't wanted to touch on, but they have been uh, wanting to or willing to make progress on increasing uh, imports from the US. Of course, there's the question around ZTE as well. We touched on this mm -hmm. and the fact that this telecoms company here has been frozen out of those tech imports. They're concerned about that, of course, China, and they have some oversight of of course, and some, some, some oversight of the Qualcomm NXP deal. And we've been told that that's probably not going to get signed off until they get some clarity on ZT. And then, of course, we've heard that Chinese officials have been over in Europe trying to put on something of a charm offensive around working with their European counterparts on at least upholding some of these multilateral trade systems like the WTO process that it seems like Washington and Trump administration uh, is, is less keen on not appointing those judges, for example. So there's lots at play here, but it seems like the Chinese will be looking now to the next move from the Trump administration. All right, so several things to factor in with regard to the movement of shares early in trade in Asia. Uh, the early risers, that's the Nikkei in Japan, the Australian benchmark, and uh, of course the Kospi in South Korea, all opened with strong gains, particularly the Nikkei, which was gaining about 1.25%. Now, the Chinese benchmarks have also opened up positive. The Shanghai exchange, not as positive as some of its peers. Uh, the Hang Seng, though, has opened with gains of over a percent. So in line, more or less, with the cues that are coming in from the US markets. Now, recently, you probably read or you've heard about the fact that Chinese mainland shares are being inducted into the MSCI. Now, what does that mean for China and for those stock markets? And what do executives or the top officials think about it. Listen in to what the chief executive officers of the MSCI, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan and Man Group have to say about the latest move. There is no question in our mind that they are, they are really intent on opening up the country. It is not an if, it's simply a when and it's simply a way to do it in, an, in a stable, measured way so it doesn't create any kind of upheaval or instability in the financial right. markets. So um, I believe that, uh, I personally believe and our company believes that the process would actually be faster than we, we, we thought about a year ago. I think it's very positive. I mean, it's, it's another validation that the Chinese markets are opening up and becoming global markets. It'll be a plus. But again, I, I put that as a very minor adjustment. It's a nice thing. It gets the world more educated about China. We find we can generate significant alpha in China, um, in both A shares and here in Hong Kong. China seems to me a perfect market for active fund management for a long time to come. All right, let's head to the trade setup for the day in India and also what's happening in the futures and options space. Darshan Mehta and Agam Vakil are here to tell you all about those two things. 
Darshan, first to you, how is it looking this morning? Positive cues? Yeah, positive cues coming in uh, from the from Wall Street, from Asia, and now that's been reflected in how the SDX Nifty is behaving. So that's uh, up almost uh, 45 points at this point of time. So clear traction that's seen, and a lot will do with uh, how you know HDFC Bank reacts in trade. So the Nifty Bank is something that uh, you know you should be watching out in trade today. Uh, let's take a look at how the ADR spanned out in trade. You can see that Tata Motors, Dr. Eddy's, ICICI Bank, and Vedanta, all of them were up in trade. Uh, Tata Motors because of the uh, UK JLR sales that came in. Uh, you had HDFC Bank which was unchanged but remember today uh, 4.3 crore shares are up for grab for FII. So HDFC Bank will be the stock in focus today. Apart from it if you're looking at how commodities have panned out you can see that crude has fallen for the third straight day. It's for the Brent side it's, it's almost uh, you know coming close to the $76.50 barrel per mark and WTI is trading marginal with, with some bit of gains that are coming in. Uh, most of the base metals did manage to end with a positive bias. If you're looking at it, aluminium was up half a percent, copper was up six tenths of a percent, nickel was up one and a half percent, lead didn't do well and lead has been not doing well for a while. Uh, the, the base metals in China have opened with the positive bias, most of them, copper is up almost over one and a half percent, so there is significant amount of traction that's happening and even on the precious metal side, there seems to be more traction that's happening. Now if you're coming uh, to, you know, the fund flows that happen in trade, uh, let's see what, they, what happened, FI sold in almost 102 crores at the cash market. DIs were net biased to the tune of almost 338 crores in the cash market. Now, if you're seeing some of the sectors in focus, the Nifty was down 40 points. The mid caps and small caps are much more selling that came in into trade. Uh, now, the Nifty Bank uh, is something, and the Nifty PSU Bank did manage to crack in trade. But I'll watch out for the Nifty Bank because HDFC Bank is a large constituent. Nifty has a large constituent of uh, uh, the HDFC Bank share, so that will be in focus. Real estate as a pack was so selling to the tune of 1.5%. Now, mainly the weeks managed to move up since the market was down in trade it was up almost two and a half percent but basically nifty was down 40 points what contributed hdfc bank after a big rally saw selling that came in kotak saw selling that came in infosys was rather weak the top gainer was maruti post a stellar set of uh, auto sales numbers reliance and icici bank did manage to contribute so auto as a pack did extremely well but agam what are you seeing on the fno side that's right, Darshan. Uh, auto was uh, one of the uh, sectors which did well. But other than that, uh, in terms of the broader markets, we did see some weakness come in. As you can see, another 2.6% added in open interest towards shorts on the Nifty and the Nifty Bank as well. What we saw was some weakness come through as another 4.5% unwinding coming through. So longs unwinding for the Nifty Bank. Uh, in terms of the wicks, of course, uh, that inched up higher, but still very much in that range of around 13 to 14. And uh, the Nifty put call ratio in this case shot up quite substantially, surprisingly, considering we actually saw the Nifty come off. That stands around 1.5 almost, as against 1.1. Uh, in terms of changes in open interest, because this is early days in, ju in, uh, in the June series, what we've seen is a lot of traction, as, as you can see, in the upper level calls. A lot more writing coming through around the 10,800, 900, and 11,000 calls. And some more writing and base building in the 10,700 put. So expect the Nifty to defend at least this uh, particular uh, level in the near term. Let's move on and take a look at how the open interest is now distributed across uh, different strikes. And as you can see, we still have max OI in the 11,000 call. And this is going to give you a range. And so we're looking at a range of around 400 points between these two. Uh, the 600, 9,600 put has max OI. And that's the range we were working with, the 400 points out there. Let's also take a look at some stocks which, uh, which continue to buzz. Well, Torrent Pharma it continues to advance further. Another, uh, you know, 35% added in open interest towards longs. Just Dial, of course, showing some weakness now. We've seen some shorts build up there as well. And among others, we have TVS Motor Company. Of course, the auto sector did have a very good day of trade, and TVS Motor Company saw another 22% added in open interest. So, plenty of stocks to watch out for, and of course, benchmark indices, which are indicating an opening of about 10,700. All right, thanks so much for that, Agam. Let's take a quick check on the rupee in the bond market now. The Indian rupee on Friday closed at a five-week high against the US dollar on higher demand for the currency from foreign investors to buy shares of HDFC Bank. The uh, rupee ended at 67.06 against the US dollar, up 
nearly half a percent from its previous close of 67.41. We'll have to see whether that pans out today as well because remember, the US dollar accelerated sharply on Friday post those jobs data uh, numbers that came in, the positive numbers, and also the fact that there's a large expectation uh, or more firm expectation of a rate hike by the Fed in uh, this month. Now, meanwhile, the 10-year benchmark government bond uh, prices declined for the fourth session. And that's ahead of the RBI policy meet or the meeting of the Monetary Policy Committee that starts today. The decision on monetary policy will come in on Wednesday. All right, let's shift focus now to the commodities market. Uh, Jesh Kelani is here with all the updates. Morning, Jesh. Morning, Alex. Let me start off with oil prices, which are currently trading a bit soft uh, on account of uh, jump in the U.S. rig counts that has uh, jumped to a nearly three-year high. Uh, now, uh, our oil is currently trading uh, lower for the third consecutive day. Uh, not only that, it has uh, it also declined more than three percent for last week, and it was the second consecutive uh, week that we saw losses for the oil prices. Uh, so, definitely some softness coming in for the oil. Uh, now, as far as OPEC and its allies are concerned, they have uh, once again re iterated their stress uh, to uh, you know the need to maintain the cooperation in order to ensure uh, global supply uh, prices are stable. Uh, as far as base metals are concerned, the LME base metal index itself uh, climbed more than 1% last week. All base metals ended higher on the London Metal Exchange on Friday, except for lead, which was down in trade. Uh, now, copper futures uh, jumped on the back of uh, US jobs data, uh, which actually signaled economic growth and demand going forward. Uh, the aluminium premium in the US market uh, actually surged on account of uh, the Trump tariffs, and we had uh, nickel. Uh, the uh, you know base metal to watch out for because not only did it climb all days last week it also surged for the fifth consecutive week in a row now, as far as uh, base metals in uh, Shanghai are concerned, uh, we are seeing some bit of uptick come about uh, for most of them uh, with, uh, you know, Shanghai copper, uh, which is actually trading more than 1% higher. So watch out for that one. As far as precious metals are concerned, uh, gold has once again slipped below the 1300 mark uh, because the U.S. jobs data has actually proved to be a headwind for the precious metal. Uh, thanks so much for that, Chesh. Now, turning back to India and speaking about sugar, uh, the GST Council has decided to wait for the Attorney General's opinion before proceeding with a sugar cess. Not all state governments are completely in favour of the proposal, with some states sticking to their stance that it only adds to the centre's coffers. States argue that it's the local administration that has to pay the higher price, while the centre will get the funds under the GST regime. Uh, we are exploring various possibilities. And detail not on all the alternatives will be made by the Secretariat. And so that we will have more informed discussion and decision in the next meeting. There are many issues involved. The basic architecture of GST is the amount involved is only 1,500, 2,000. Do you want to compromise it for that? This is a big question. Is 1,500 crores or rupees something not that is? Um, can be made available otherwise. Economic advisor thinks it can be made. So let us explore the possibilities and alternatives. Regarding our state, we are strongly objecting. So we convey our from state of Tamil Nadu. So we can we, we convey there. So they, all this actually taken into account of this uh, GOM. So in another meeting, uh, the decision will be. This Vishay ki muze lagta hai ki jab tak एजी का ओपिनियन नहीं आएगा तब तक तीन रुपया सेस के बारे में कमिटी ने अपने निर्णय को रिजर्व आरक्षित रखा हुआ है गन्ना उत्पादक किसानों को उचित दाम देने के लिए और जो कुछ व्यवस्था है जिसमें अभी 20 लाख मेट्रिक टन शुगर एक्सपोर्ट करने की हमने बात कही मगर उसको जो मदद है वो पचपन रुपया क्विंटल की मदद है तो ये भी बात हुई कि हम सरकार से ये कहे कि एक्सपोर्ट करने के लिए ये पचपन रुपए की मदद हम 110 कर सकते हैं क्या तो हम 20 लाख टन शुगर हम एक्सपोर्ट कर सकते हैं क्योंकि हमारे सामने सबसे बड़ी चुनौती ये है कि हमारे यहाँ पे अभी शुगर का उत्पादन जितनी हमारी खपत है उससे ज़्यादा है 18 परसेंट जो जो इथोनॉल पे अभी जीएसटी है उसको पाँच प्रतिशत तक लाकर 
हम इसे और ज़्यादा मजबूती से हम इथोनॉल बनाने का काम कर सकते हैं क्या इस पर भी चर्चा हुई Now remember, this entire conversation about a sugar cess has arisen because of the oversupply of sugar of the past few cropping seasons, particularly this season as well. The worry is that if the monsoons are normal, like they're expected to be, you could have another year of oversupply of sugar cane, and that could lead to further pressure on sugar prices. And that's why you'd see the kind of volatility that you've seen in all the sugar companies. on the uh, indexes on the exchanges that are listed all right with that let's move on uh, to the stocks in news nikki mirchandani is here to tell you all about them nikki morning Hi Alex first up I'm going to start with bunch of banks which have hiked their rates so uh, SBI has hiked MCLR by 10 basis points across the tenors with effect June 1st also we have Karnataka Bank which has raised the interest rate on domestic and rupee deposit to 7.25 from 7.10 earlier HDFC Bank HDFC 2 has increased its retail prime lending rate on its home loan by uh, 10 basis points in terms of fundraising we have uh, three companies four companies is a canfin home board which has already approved raising up to 6000 crore via ncds and bonds additionally 10000 crore uh, sorry 1000 crore via right issue and qip oriental bank of commerce is expected to raise its, uh, approximately 3000 crore in fy19 and is expected to hold a board meeting on june 29th for that idea uh, idea cellular which has a sort uh, shareholders approval to change the name to vodafone idea would also be raising 50 15000 crore through ncds alabant bank too is uh, expected to raise funds in pharmaceutical space you have dr reddies which has uh, completed the us fda there has completed an inspection in one of its plant with no observation zydus kedila has also got an approval for one of the drugs uh, in other developments we have dilip bilcon which has backed an order worth around 1310 odd crore hero moto corp sales which is up as much as 11% higher for the month of may and coal india yet again misses the target with its off take coming at 52.86 million as compared to the target of 58.18 all right thanks so much for that nikki somit sarkar is here with the big brokerage calls of the day somit morning what's up uh, good morning alex on the big brokerage calls for the day first we have a city on steel authority of india limited on the brokerage has raised its rating on the stock neutral from sell and has also raised the target price to 83 from 50 rupees now the fourth quarter ebitda return for the company was the highest since 2011 and going forward the brokerage is expecting this higher steel spreads to sustain on the back of better than expected china steel demand continuing supply limits and falling inventory levels and the company management is targeting around 28% growth in volumes and which according to the brokerage may be a bit stretched however still it is expecting a strong volumes as the other key players like the JSW steel and Tata steel are running at high capacity utilization and the assets under IVC proceedings are pending ramp up the brokerage is also expecting the company's net debt to a bit to fall to around 3 times by FY20 from 9 times in FY18 lastly the brokerage has hiked its FY19 and FY20 ebitda estimates by close to 26% and 25% on potentially higher steel prices going forward second we have is credit suisse on india automobile sector now in may 2018 passenger vehicle demand accelerated and was the key highlight according to the brokerage industry volumes grew around 17% driven by maruti tata honda and toyota now, along with this an annual volume growth of 25% for tractors was the strongest that the sector has seen in the last 2 years healthy growth in the commercial vehicles and market share gains were seen for the for tata motors and for two wheelers it was an another month of double digit growth led by bajaj and hero motor corp now according to the brokerage ashok leland and tvs has lost has lost market share in may 2018 to its peers lastly the brokerage prefers mnm and escorts among the other car makers all right thanks so much for that somit now before we go on to a an update on what you can find on the website i do want to remind the viewers that are tuned in right now that we have a new show on uh, bloomberg quint that we're working on it's called portfolio and it deals with building up your finances we would like to bring you into our studio so that we can help you with that one really important financial goal that you have and we'll have an expert build out a portfolio just for you so consider joining us right into us on portfolio at bloombergquint.com and we'll get in touch with you 
All right, if you log on to the website BloombergQuinn.com, here's just a few of the stories that you will find. The government has done away with li the licensing permits for foreign vessels for coastal movement of agriculture, fishery and animal produce, besides allowing Indian citizens to charter ships for these. And that's according to Union Minister Nitin Gadkari. India's steel output rose over 5.5% in April, but exports declined by as much as 25% during the month. That's according to the World Steel Association. Remember though that exports form a relatively small component of total output. And Airbus is favoured to pull in an order from Singapore Airlines affiliate Vistara for as many as 60 new engine single aisle airliners to gain a stronger foothold in the booming Indian market. Alright, the much-awaited Mary Meeker's report on the latest internet trends was released over the weekend and here are the five key takeaways. There's one thing the Mary Meeker report won't tell you though, that you'll find all the news and the live market action right here on your mobile phone. Just log on to BloombergQuinn.com. Thanks so much for watching and this was Daybreak.